I love reading, and one of the best things about reading is when you find an unexpectedly awesome book. And that can be quite a rare thing when you just stick to what you know. I also think reading's a bit of a commitment, and I don't want to give that much time to something that might be mediocre. So I love a recommendation. That's why I decided to start a challenge. I'm going to read a recommendation from a number of great YouTubers from their roundups of the best books from last year. Now they didn't all give a recommendation as one particular favourite, so I read the book that they did the best job of selling me on. And it really took me outside my comfort zone, but I had an awesome time, and I genuinely found some books that have become part of my all-time favourite list. Let me talk you through them. Now the first YouTuber I went to was Jack Edwards. Now I've watched a number of Jack Edwards lists before and I found some really good reads in there, so I went in with a bit of confidence. Now Jack kept coming back to a book called Penenka by Ronan Hessian. In fact, he enjoyed this book so much that he said he would sell his soul to read it again. That sounded quite convincing to me. Actually, the plot of this book isn't unlike something I would choose for myself. But it's not the kind of book that you're going to see chart very often. So unless you're given a really strong recommendation, you're unlikely to find it. Now I'm glad I found this. Penenka is the fictional story of an ex-footballer who famously missed a penalty that got his home team sent down. He then lives the rest of his life in the shadows of that one mistake. Now we join Penenka much later in life as he's coming to grips with what he calls his iron mask. That's an all-consuming head pain that seems to grip him every night. We later find out this could be a symptom of something much more sinister. This book is very conversational, focusing on some really good dialogue. It charts the course of managing life through turmoil whilst trying to maintain and develop new relationships. It's short, but it's powerful. I read it over the course of two days and I think you'll likely do something similar. It's definitely one to add to your list. So next, I looked to the book Leo and her recommendation for the best book she read last year was Bunny by Mona Awad. Now this is definitely not something I would gravitate to naturally, it felt like it could be a bit too girly and maybe a bit young adult, not really something I would normally choose. But that was kind of the whole idea of this challenge, so it felt like the way to go. This book is a highly surreal and darkly funny story about a young writer in a well-regarded literary college who feels kind of isolated from the other girls in her course, until she finds herself drawn into their world. A world of elaborate cultish rituals that seem to blur the lines of reality and fantasy. It starts off weird and it gets weirder as it goes. It brings with it an unsettling view on conformity, image, friendship and self-identity. I continually changed my mind. Did I hate it? Was it kind of growing on me? Did I actually quite like it? And even after I'm finished, I'm still not quite sure. Interestingly, at one point, the protagonist actually criticises the group of girls in her course. And the criticisms she aims at them are exactly the kind of notes I'd written about the book. She calls them willfully obscure and talks about them having feigned angst. Exactly what I felt about the whole work. But that doesn't mean to say it wasn't good. It's one of those books that really gets you thinking about what's going to happen next and you try and guess what's going to be the twist. And I never got it right. If you like surreal fiction, then go check it out. Interesting little aside for you, I actually listened to this one on an Audible audiobook and one of the top reviews said, nah, I didn't like it, I just couldn't get on with the bad Scottish accent. Well, there was no Scottish accent. Next, I looked to Emmy. Now, she actually had two books drawing for first place. And the one that she sold me best on was Season of Migration to the North by Tayeb Salih. Now again, this is not a book I would have ever considered otherwise. This book was first published in 1966 in Arabic. It's the work of a Sudanese writer and it's recognised as a modern classic. I really enjoyed this book and I found it surprisingly accessible. It tells the story of a Sudanese man who returns to his native village in Sudan. He has been away studying literature in England and he returns to his family. When he gets there, he finds that another man has entered the village and seems to have won over the entire village with his wit and charm. Now, as they begin to develop a friendship, it appears that the man has a dark and mysterious past. This book is genuinely good. It offers an interesting perspective on both Eastern and Western cultures, it challenges stereotypes, and it weaves in themes of love, loss, and identity. It's surprising how easy it is to get to grips with. The writing is skillful, with great use of imagery and evocative symbolism, genuinely one to check out. Next, I looked to the YouTube giant that is Ali Abdal. Now, he put together a list of his 10 books read last year, and there was actually only one work of fiction. That was The Seven Husbands of Evangeline Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this book had been recommended by loads of people. It absolutely blew up last year, and having read it, I can see why. It charts the story of a Hollywood icon's rise to fame, and tells the secrets she had to keep to get there. It's told through the eyes of a young journalist given the exclusive chance to interview this star. 
The story charts time through the actress's seven husbands that all shaped part of her character. Now it's so engaging. The book isn't that short, but you'll get through it so quickly because once you're in, you're in. Great characters and it absolutely nails that Hollywood vibe. It's like a soap opera on steroids, full of scandal and glamour. Definitely don't skip this one. Next, I went to Mike's book reviews and Mike's top book of the year was a book called Swan Song by Robert McGannon. Now he did a really good job of selling me on this book and I thought this is one I definitely want to read. It sounded like a dark and interesting fantasy story. Then I looked at the book and the audiobook and I saw it was about a thousand pages or 35 hours. For goodness sake, Mike, I'm trying to do this in a month. Give me a chance. So I parked it and I moved on to the next one. I'm sorry, you did a really good job of selling it. I will come back to it one day. Next, I went to Noelle Gallagher, who recommended Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now this book had been mentioned by so many people. So I already had it kind of penciled into my list. And I thought, now's the time. Now I read this one on an Audible audiobook. It's actually won quite a few awards, I think. And it's read by Ray Porter. I've really enjoyed some of his works before. Hail Mary was phenomenal. Now, I've not actually read Andy Weir's biggest title, The Martian. I've seen the film and I've never really got round to testing the book, but I have read Artemis and I absolutely loved it. He seems to have locked down that kind of science-backed sci-fi fiction. It's his own thing and he's really made the most of it. Hail Mary is the story of a man who awakes on a spaceship with no idea why he's there. There's no one else around and as he begins to piece it together, it's clear he's actually Earth's last hope to survive an incoming Armageddon. The story leans on the partially cliched trope of amnesia, but it manages it really well. The timeline jumps between Earth and the spaceship as his memories of home start to come back. There are so many interesting moments in this book that I just don't want to spoil for you. The writing is witty and funny. Genuinely, if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do. Next, I looked to Sunbeam Jess and chose a recommendation from her Straight Up Enjoyable section. I chose Small Things Like These by Claire O'Hagan. Now, I went in confidently when I saw this book because I had a quote on the inside from Andrew O'Hagan. Now, O'Hagan actually wrote Mayflies, which featured in my video of the best books from last year. So I knew this book was in good company. This is a really short novella that uses each syllable with a sense of precision. You can almost miss entire plot points as they're mentioned so subtly. Small Things Like These is a tale of small town Irish life from the 1980s as a family navigates their way, whilst the protagonist, Bill Furlong, ponders the differences to his own upbringing. But under the surface, it's actually an incredibly powerful look at a hidden side of Ireland at the time. The latter half of the book focuses on an encounter at a convent and Bill Furlong's reaction to that encounter. And it actually wasn't until completely finishing the book and reading the author's note at the end that I realised quite what we've been dealing with. I was genuinely like, wow, this book just went from a seven to a nine like that. I really urge you to read it the same way. Don't be tempted to jump to that last page and read the author's note. That's not the way it's intended. Read it in its entirety and then delve into the details. At 116 pages, it's not going to consume your life, but it's an awesome way to lose a few hours. That leaves my final book, which actually came from Jared Henderson's Books That Made Me Who I Am. He sold me really well on Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Now, this book has been on my list for absolutely ages, but I've never found the time to get around to reading it. This challenge felt like the perfect thing to give me that push, so I made it a last minute edition. I knew it was going to be a challenging read. I mean, it's written in 1980s Russia. But similar to Season of Migration to the North, I was blown away by just how accessible it was. Incredibly engaging characters that face so many similar concerns to that of modern society. It's a gripping story of a desperate young man who commits a heinous crime to try and elevate himself and show that he is bound for greatness. But he finds himself wrecked with guilt and paranoia. It's a book that asks, is there ever a greater good that allows you to commit an awful crime? It's a story of redemption that takes a fantastically complex look at philosophy and psychology with a cast that would hold up in any modern creative setting. I can see why it's a literary masterpiece, but that's not to say it's an easy read. I had to continually check the spark notes to remind myself which character was which, as the Russian names tend to blend into one, and they even use multiple names for many of the characters just to keep you on your toes. But once you can get past that slight confusion, this book reads fantastically, and I can say it will now sit in my all-time favourites list forever. So they are all the books I read, and genuinely I think it's one of the most balanced months of reading I've ever had. I'd love to know your thoughts on any of the books I read, or any further recommendations for more things I could read in future. If you've enjoyed this video, then a like would be fantastic, and a sub to the channel would be amazing. 
I'd love to see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.